Bet, Resh, Aleph. And bara means to fatten up or to fill in the concept of making something full, to fill something up. Why don't I use the word create? Well, for several reasons. One is create is an abstract. In my teachings, one of the things I really stress is, is that Greek, Greco-Roman thinking is abstract. We use abstract words all the time. Bless, pray, that's an abstract. Uh, believe, that's an abstract. Believe's a good one. I believe in God. What am I saying? I'm, I'm saying that I know this from a Greek perspective as an abstract. I'm saying I know God is God and God's going to do what he says, right? Well, that's what that means from a Greek perspective. But if you translate that back into Hebrew and I use the, the word aman, then what I'm saying is I support God. Now I put the action on myself. I support him. Create is an abstract concept. If creating is an abstract and also, by the way, what does create mean? Create, in the context of biblical studies, most people say that create means to make something out of nothing. In Genesis 1-1, God created out of nothing the heavens and the earth. We know that cannot be true. Cannot be true, or at least that concept of that word bara, because it says that, that God created Adam. Yet in Genesis 2-7 it says that he formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. So he formed him. He did not create him out of nothing. Ex nihilo, the Latin, ex nihilo. He did not create out of nothing. That's one of the problems with the word create. It's an abstract. Here's another one. I'm going to put that verse up again that I put up earlier. This is We're going to look at it again for another reason. 1 Samuel 2.29 Why then look with greedy eye at my sacrifices and my offerings which I commanded and honor your sons above me by fattening yourselves upon the choicest parts. That word fattening there is the Hebrew verb bara. It's the exact same verb found in Genesis 1 verse 1. Here they translate it as fattening. Again, we have to under look at, at how these Hebrew words are used throughout the text. Genesis chapter 1 and a lot of people ask me this, but then you're saying that God didn't create the heavens and the earth. That is correct. I am saying that God did not create the heavens and the earth. Well, where did they come from? I don't know. Yeah, now, this is another difference between Hebrew and Greek. Greek goes, well, wait a minute. I, I need to know when they were created. We have to know what is beyond the horizon. That's Greek thinking. Hebrew thinking is, I don't care. I don't know. I don't care. The Bible never says where the heavens and the earth came from. Never says. It simply says in Genesis 1-1 that God fattened the skies and land, or he filled them up. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 is a summary of the entire creation story. And I use that word creation loosely, by the way. So let's take a look at some other evidence. Let's take a look at the word bara in its, its cognates and its roots, because it's very important. Hebrew is a, a root system language. Uh, words are not dependent upon themselves. They come with roots, and they come with um, cognates, and they come with words that are related to itself. And by looking at all of these words and how they're related, we can better understand the meaning of each of these words. The word bara, another word that's related to it, this word comes from the root bara, because bara is a root. Okay, so let's take a look at that. This is going to be the word bari. It comes from bara. Genesis 41, verse 4. And the gaunt and thin cows ate up the seven sleek and fat cows. There's the word bari. This is the word that comes from the verb bara, the word in question here. Also, if we look at some of the other cognates, some other roots that are related to this, we have barar, which means to, to be clean. Where do you get soap? From fat. Bara, in fact, the ancients made soap. They made soap from fat. So barar is to be clean, which comes from fat. A barar of soap. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bara, betresh, hay. This word means the select choice meat. Uh, the word barut means meat. That comes from that word. And also barit comes from that, from bara. Barit. What does barit mean? Covenant. But more literally, more literally, the meat. Cut the meat. Now, the word karat means cut. So you, when, when, the, when the Hebrew says karat berit, it's cut the covenant or cut the meat. Literally, cut the meat. And that's the way they would make a covenant. was they take the meat of the animal, they'd cut it in two, pass through the pieces. Jeremiah talks all about this and the significance of that. Bir means fat place, usually in the context of a place that's bountiful. Fat place, a good place. From this word bir is birah, and that means a palace. A palace, that's a 
a fat place. Those are the cognates of bara. And if you'll notice, all of the evidence that I give here, and this is what I've done with the ancient Hebrew lexicon, is look at all of the roots, look at all the cognates, look at all the words that are related to it, and see what they mean. Here's an example of how this works. Cham. What does cham mean? And by the way, the letter chet, I translate it as with an HH rather than CH like most people do. What does cham mean? Scorching, harm, warm, hot. Here are some words that come from this. You have chamam, which means, chamam means heat. Chema is cheese. Chemet is a skin bag. Chamas means to shake. By the way, chamas, probably recognize that, means to shake or to destroy by shaking. Chacham is wise and chamad is crave. What do all those words have in common? The ancients used to make cheese by taking and putting milk in a skin bag. The skin of the animal has enzymes in it that break down the milk to separate it into curds and whey. And then they would take the skin bag and they would hang it out in the sun and they would shake it to cause the separation. Cheese, skin bag, shake, all of these come from the root cham. Chamam, chama, chemet. Chama, I mean, chamas, they all come from chem. What about chacham, wisdom, to be wise? Cham is written with two Hebrew letters, the letter chet and the letter mem. The letter chet is a picture of a wall in the ancient pictographs, and it causes, it's a separation from the inside to the outside, from one side to the other side. The chet is a picture of a wall, the mem is a picture of water. So what does cham mean? To separate out water. It's exactly what the word means. You see how beautiful the Hebrew language is. It just totally amazes me time after time when I find these things that the Hebrew is like an onion. It's just one layer after another, after another, after another. If we're just reading the biblical text, it'd be like me saying to you, I'm going to take you all out to dinner. Okay, You have your choice. I can either give you a McDonald's hamburger or take you to a five-star restaurant. You're, both, you're getting meat in both places, just that one is a little bit better than the other one. Reading the English, just reading through the English text is like going to McDonald's, whereas if you get into the Hebrew and understand these Hebrew words and Hebrew concepts, you're, you're at a five-star restaurant. Anyway, so what does wisdom have to do with that? Well, wisdom actually is defined in, in the Bible as being able to separate good from bad. Wisdom, which is related to this word cham, because chacham, it comes from the root cham, wisdom is the ability to separate out the good from the bad. Here's a verse that I always thought was very interesting. It's Isaiah 7:15. Cheese and honey, or dates, the Hebrew word davash, it means a sticky, gooey mass. Cheese and honey, he will eat to know, to reject bad and choose the good. What that verse is actually saying, by eating cheese and honey, you will have wisdom. Craving, what does craving have to do with all of this? Cheese is a delicacy. What are we supposed to crave, desire? What are we supposed to pursue? Play wisdom. You see how all of these things, they come together. Anyway, I went through this whole thing about cheese to show you how important looking at the roots of a word is. And the same thing with bara. You can't just look at bara and say it means create and leave it that alone. You've got to look at the context of how that word is used throughout scripture. What are its cognates? What are its uh, related roots? We saw that it meant fat, choice meat, these type of things. What did he fatten it with? This is chapter 1 is about. Days 1 through 3 are separating. Okay, here we have the idea of separating again. Day 1, God separates light from darkness. Day 2, Elohim separates the water and the sky. Day 3, Elohim separates the water from the land. So the first three days are about separating. The next three days are parallel with that. What did I say day one was? Separating light and darkness. Well, day four, he fills the light and the dark with the sun and the moon. Day five is parallel with day two. Day two is separating the water from the sky. Day five, he fills the water with the fish, the sky with the birds. Day three is parallel with day six. Day six, he fills the land with the animals and people. So that's what he filled the sky and the land with. It's all right there in Genesis chapter one.